My name is Myra Kalman and I am an illustrator and a writer. When I was taught how to meditate, how to do the mindful practice, I thought it was extremely simple and delightful and easy to do, really easy, you can easy do. But of course everything is much more complicated than that. Something happens that when you practice mindfulness, when you meditate for a few minutes during the day, there is a sense of calm and a sense of well-being, and which can translate into many things during the day, of course, and into relationships and into a worldview. So it's big. What's wonderful is that if you are doing things like meditating or doing a walking meditation, in the best, in the best possible world, you wouldn't be talking about it to anybody afterwards. It would just be folded into your day and it would just become a natural part of your day because it is a natural part of the day. If you're sitting on the bus and you do a few minutes of just of, uh, of meditating and deep breathing and mindful meditation, that's a normal human activity. So it doesn't require a, a, a giant announcement at the end of the bus ride, hey everybody, I just did three minutes of meditation or seven minutes. So I think that it is a very natural part of it. It's really almost the, the language that we use and the, the semantics of it because every human being stops and, and stops thinking and daydreams and observes in the course of their day. Uh, they just, they're not giving it a framework. I don't know who knows in my professional world about meditating or working for mindful. I mean, I'm sure some people do, but we usually when you tell people that, you've medit that you're starting to meditate or that you do meditate, half the room or half, you know, everybody says, oh, I do it or I know it or I'm doing it or I love it. And you find a world of people who are meditating every, everywhere you turn. Then there are other people who are quite uninterested and really couldn't care less about you know, what, it, what it is that gets you through the day and that you, you, know, you found your thing that's fine, but it's not necessarily something that they need to hear about. And so I think that it's not, I don't think it's anything so extreme. I mean, also when I talk about it, I talk about it in a very pragmatic way. And it really is sort of like, when I wake up in the middle of the night and I can't fall asleep, if I meditate, I fall, I fall asleep again. And I think, well, that's a pretty fantastic thing to be able to do in, and to use a kind of uh, a calming mechanism. So I think that most people think it's fine and, uh, and then we all go on. Everybody's uh, you know, a little bit crazy and everybody's a little bit distraught. And I don't even know whether you want to eliminate those. You can't eliminate those things from your life. And I don't even know if you want to try. So sometimes I'm wondering what the goal is and what the, well, I'm wondering what the goal is. And then you go to, well, the goal is being in the process. And then if you're being in the process, you're going to have tremendous highs and lows all day long. So what, in fact, in the end, does mindfulness do? And in a way, it makes me feel compassionate to all of the people who are going through all those highs and lows and, let's say, some relatives who I might have been harsh about.